An unchanged lineup coming off an outstanding performance in Canberra last week. There was no talk of one step at a time or we'll get the win first, stick to the processes. None of that. They went all out for the bonus point win and they got it to squeeze out the Crusaders. This team, a fusion of precocious talent, a strong work ethic and immense character led from the front by as good a co-captain combination as you could ever wish for. The man who'll come out in front of them. It's a special occasion for Ash Dixon tonight. He leads the Highlanders onto Eden Park. His 100th for the franchise. A move south that he made that has defined his career. brings such strong leadership all-round excellence in his game a much respected and admired figure Aaron Smith well you couldn't ask for a better co-captain playing as well as he ever has and thriving on the responsibility that he carries with this Highlanders team well, after missing out on Super Rugby Aotearoa, the final by a narrow margin, the Blues have put together five winning performances. Their superior points differential enough to earn home advantage on a ground where they don't lose many. Farewelling a couple of their most popular teammates tonight, desperate to break a trophy drought that goes back to 2013. And they run out in front of a big crowd here at Eden Park. The gloomy weather hasn't put the fans off. Over 30,000 in the house. As the Blues go in search of their first championship trophy in 18 long years, 2003, the last time they won. Or Teddy Black, well, there were a few flutters during the week when he went down at training, followed by a rather contrived rush of speculation. The reality is he's fit, he's on the park, and he has done a very solid job in that all-important Blues 10 jersey. An admirable 89% off the kicking tee. Smoke from the fireworks clearing. An all-New Zealand final. So fitting that we set the scene for an epic Kiwi clash with the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please now be upstanding for the New Zealand national anthem. Tonight being sung by Diva Mahal and students from Manurewa Intermediate School. You want to know how much it means? Just take a look at the face of Aaron Smith. The anthem beautifully sung by Deva Mahal and 200 beautiful young people from Manurewa Intermediate School. What a challenge this team brings. 
and they will lay down the challenge with Hotoa Kiatoa, the Highlanders' haka. The Highlanders' homage to their southern kaitiaki, the guardians of the region they represent, led by Ash Dixon, his 100th in Highlanders colours tonight. As the referee, Mike Fraser the man in charge of the Sky Super Rugby Trans-Tasman final, Ben O'Keefe and Paul Williams. His assistant, Brendan Pickerel, is the TMO. Well, plenty of emotion out there, Justin, before kickoff. It's nicely set up in the crowd. It's a big one. That's a big crowd. And it's a fantastic night for this occasion. The key things in finals is to make sure that you get all that peripheral stuff that has now happened out of the way, start well, get into the game. Both teams will be desperate for that. We never chat down on the street. Yep, yep. The crowd still finding their seats here. As Mike Fraser brings them together, the Highlanders in their away strip on our right. Bryce Heem, what a fantastic season he has had after coming back to New Zealand, answering the call. Putty Putty Parkinson, some doubts about him during the week. He's fit to play. And this man, Finley Christie, up against the master, Aaron Smith. Mitch Hunt. Sets us underway at Eden Park. And it's Zahn Sullivan charging back at the oncoming Highlanders players. First touch of the ball. The ruck forms just outside the 22. Aaron Smith is doing a little clearing out of his own, getting rid of Alex Hodgman. And Christie pumps one high. Early challenge well taken by Josh Ioannet. And the Highlanders have it on the 10. Ethan De Groot. Oh, straight away, the clash with Nepo Laulala. Himeno now. Ball's been ripped away. Dalton Papali'i. Although the referee has caught a little knock on in there. So we'll have a scrum on the 10. Well, he's a man they would have spoken about all week, the Highlanders. Dalton Papali'i. At the top of his game at the moment. Over the ball, he's got very good upper body strength. The way that he can just rip the ball free here. Doesn't manage to hold on to it, but again, that threat is very evident early in the game. He will be a player that they must remove all night, or he'll hurt them with turnovers. Yes, both number sevens with very impressive stats. Billy Harmon, his tackling has been first rate. Dalton Papali'i, all round excellence. Powerful with ball in hand. Very good over the breakdown, and also excellent on the tackle. But it's the Highlanders Five. with a midfield scrum on the 10. Aaron Smith. Six. Ioane parked up right behind the scrum. Who's trying to put some pressure on, but he frees it up. Ioane goes to the left, jabs a little kick through. It'll go into touch. Just didn't get his timing quite right there, Josh Ioane, the ball. And delivery was a little slow, so when he got the ball, he was pretty much already at the defensive line. Tried to get it through, but not accurate enough. So an opportunity for the Blues to launch. Right, first line out. They had a few wobbles 
in the second half last week. The Highlanders. But Gerard Cowley Tuioti reaches high. Kurt Eklund has it. Use it once. Aaron Smith oh, use the ball now. able to be heard quite clearly above the 30 plus thousand crowd. Akira Ioane, his first carry. Both of these teams so good on defence. Christie kicking, floating out on the full, is it? Oh no. Well, Nariki made contact with the ball, but no, they've decided it was out on the full. Yeah, that maybe just that breeze there, TJ, and the fact it's in the face of the Blues player. Now he's out here, Nariki, so that's deemed as out on the full. He's further over the touchline than I thought from the angle that I was looking at it, and you heard the explanation there from Mike Fraser. So again, an opportunity to launch this team of a thousand line-out variations. Putty, putty, Parkinson it is. Off the back they go, Smith firing it out into midfield where Scott Gregory has done such a great job for this team. Ash Dixon with the carry, Eklund with the tackle. Now a little wider of the ruck, Hameno. Building up some pressure now as Billy Harmon breaks the first line. They want quick ball, Smith away to Hunt, moving it on Ioane. The two playmakers involved. And now they're just 10 from the line. Smith to De Groot. Kali Tuioti on the tackle. Players getting over the ball and conceding a penalty, Alex Hodgman. One fine fight with the roll key. The fifth of the clean. Well, it was all very good from the line out launch. The peel around the back had a runner on the outside and inside of Aaron Smith, which gave Gregory advantage line. There's plenty of options for the Blues defence to consider, so they got on the front foot. The line from Billy Harmon, this off a short little tip on, was again over the advantage line. Check it out here. Just a little pop from Ash Dixon into the hole. He came from depth. He's well over the advantage line there as it came out to Joshua Wani on the far side. The ensuing ruck is this one here. And Hodgman in over the ball, deemed to not be in the correct position behind the back of the ruck and a penalty for the Highlanders. They look very clear, though, in what they're trying yeah, to achieve, yeah. don't they? The Highlanders at the moment, Marshy, they're getting territory and they're executing at the moment, so... I think at the end he actually might have penalised Cowley Tuioti for not rolling away, just hearing him talking to the players. But Mitch Hunt, well, they're going for three. Early pressure after five minutes. They want something to show for it. Mitch Hunt, first points of the Super Rugby Trans-Tasman final. Go to the Highlanders, 50 for the season, or for the championship there, for Mitch Hunt with that kick. And something to show for a good start. <clears throat> It'll be Zahn Sullivan to restart. Kicking deep into the 22, where Hunt is waiting. And puts it out just beyond the 10-metre mark. So the Blues will get an opportunity now to launch something. Hold the space. First venture of the game into Highlanders territory. Papali, he got it. Black takes it to the line. Looked to drop the pass off, but in the end just dropped the ball. And turnover possession. And here's Nareki for the first time in the game. Well, he tried a little chip kick ahead, and that's gone out on the full. Well, he's got a very good boot. Nareki was on his favourable side, the left foot, but it was certainly on for him to use some of that sensational footwork. Here's the shot from Ash Dixon. It was enough to rattle or Teddy Black. Billy Harmon, as he will always be on the ball on the ground. Better start from the height of this so far. When you're walking, walk straight, don't crowd it. So you notice Stay the way there. the Highlanders defend. They always defend with Mitch Hunt in the five. Then he drops back after the first phase. Go, 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 go. 
Blues dropping back. Oh, great contesting from Bryn Evans. But the Blues have got it back. Black, this time looking to move it on. TJ Fayani taken just short of halfway. Stack in the pocket. Black puts one high. Nicely taken, Ioane, but he runs ahead, and now he's been held up. And the referee calling him more because he moved forward. This could be turnover possession for the Blues. Crowd have already decided they'll go back and have a scrum. Oh, good point. Straight from a kick. Yeah. Straight from a kick, boys, I'll explain it. It's actually going to be, it's actually going to be Highlanders' ball. Uh, Patrick. It's actually straight from a kick, more form, so it's actually, no, straight from a ball. Well, uh, he's straight from changed his mind. Looked to me like he'd made a fairly decent move forward here, Justin. No, it's straight from the kick. Yeah, totally agree. Those two to three paces Ripped forward were enough to show some intent to engage a defender and... From the kick. Joshua and his body height wasn't good. Papa Lee recognised that and hit him with a good, good, good shot. Scrum. So, good, good, good. as I said, better start for the Highlanders, and they've got a, a reasonably favourable decision as well early in this game. So they need to make the most of that opportunity. Uh, Scott Gregory playing in the 12 jersey, making the move into the midfield position by necessity and has been a very good contributor. A bit of pressure at scrum time, but Smith scampers away with it, grubbers the kick down the touchline and drives the Blues back. They're a team happy to kick, and they kick well. Toy Polotu stretching out. Taking the line out ball. But again, the Blues inside their own half. Trying to work it away. Edging forward. Parkinson will have to bail out now. Right, use it once. And as he goes to the back of the Highlanders ball, it stops. Christie takes a step away, puts one high to Lear, getting after it, oh, taking it brilliantly too, snatching it away from the oncoming Seal Tomkinson, Christie, Black now, Fayani, little show of the ball, and then turning it back and forth towards Toy Pilotu, can't take it cleanly, loose ball at the back, and they'll chance their arm here because they're playing under advantage, Renton takes it to ground. So, a welter of possession at the moment for the Highlanders. Timing winger. Aaron Smith shaping to kick, shoveling it away to Nareki. Bit of hot potato stuff, but eventually they get it back to Mitch Hunt. He bangs it high, tears after it. Coming forward, Sullivan. He shoved Christie out of the way, and the referee has awarded a penalty. Away. Let me see it. Don't push him out the way. Couple of Tasman Marco teammates there, nine and ten. Well, they've gone quickly. They've given it to Talia, just looking to spark something. After a bit of a muddling start to the game, the Blues there for Christie. Good ball on from Satutu to Eklund. Now they'll look maybe to get their big forwards rumbling ahead as they've done so effectively. Black and pops it on to Fayani. Into Kondak, he goes. Hodgman. Nice flick away to Kauli Tuioti. And the clear out good as well. Sullivan uh, threw it out in front of Glycine. May not have been expecting it. Goes into touch. Scrum. Scrum call. Well, Justin, you spoke about it. Just after the hucker from the Highlanders, who would settle down first? And at the moment, you just feel that the Highlanders have done that. Been very structured for the start of this game, and the Blues just throwing a couple of 50 50 balls which they haven't done in the last couple of weeks, just forcing it a little bit. I think you bang on there, it's Tokolahi that's gone down, Not possibly, but just to reinforce what you're saying, absolutely. I think at the moment they're getting under a little bit of pressure at the breakdown where they're not getting the nice rhythm 
to be able to punch onto the ball, not making the best decisions in contact at the moment. They've dropped a couple. So, yeah, they really need to get their mind on the job very quickly, the Blues, at the moment. You look at the stats, they've had 50% or 57% of the ball. Haven't done anything with it. Tokolahi still down. Both of these teams with strong benches in yeah. terms of the front row. Have a look at the injury here to Siati Tokolahi. Yeah, good. Yeah, ball came just as it went down. Um, yeah. Okay, we're right to go. Back on his feet. There's Clark Dermody, uh, Ricky Flutie, here. and no doubt Time on scrum here. Tony Brown will be on Zoom or WhatsApp or something. Do you want to just stay the side, Ben? Sky Sport viewers in New Zealand Mark can here. take in every minute of Aaron Smith's up. performance on our player cam on okay, Channel 50. Sorry. He was. Well, they had the option, the Highlanders. The ball did go into touch, but it was also forward and knocked on, so they had the option either line out a scrum. They opted for the scrum. Now, they can't go to that scrum, obviously, without their tight head prop, so it's going to have to take a little bit of time to get him right so that we can get a restart and play. He's obviously wrenched his knee in the process so just a buzz around the crowd at the moment big one it is too that sold over twenty eight and a half thousand by yesterday more today so we're looking close we think to about thirty two thousand they're in good voice fortunately the weather's behaved managed to get the trains up and running again after some disruption early on today just as well. Well, this is a very good indication of how they set quite back the Blues good predicting the kick. So they've got Heem right back, Zan Sullivan, and Talia's taking a few paces as well. So they're almost inviting the Highlanders to run, which it is on to do. There's plenty of space outside Collins if they're game enough, the Highlanders, to move the ball from here. Oh, this will be a test for that knee of Tokolahi. And again, it's the Blues putting the shove on, and they get the penalty. Well, that's a big psychological boost for the home team. Well, that was just simply front row pressure. We got an ex absolutely excellent view of it. It was the squeeze that came on the front row. That was so forceful initially. It didn't enable Ash Dixon to strike the ball as hooker. They had no movement whatsoever. He didn't have the balance to be able to get that strike leg out to hook it. And eventually that scrum collapsed under the pressure. Yeah, it's on this side. I think it's Nepal and Lala. You can see they just go straight through Easton de Groot. And he's the one that gets all the pats on the back. And coach is happy. What's the timing on the drive? So they go to the line out. It'll be about eight metres from the line. Blues taking their time. It only operates at 83%. It's the seventh worst line out in the cop, so they've got to get this right. They lob it down the back, and it's taken down by Hoskins Satutu. Eklund comes into the boot, takes over the ball. Trying to edge it forward. They're starting to break them up too here. Parkinson's come through the middle though, and now they'll have to fight to clear it. It's a great work from Parkinson, but they're still just four or five metres from the line. Kauli Tuioti trying to latch onto it, the Highlanders. Hemeno, the arm goes out, so they can swing it wide under advantage, although good work from Michael Collins to get up and snuff out the early threat. Now the pass floated wide, Telia, referee brings them back. Tackler not rolling. Tackler not rolling. Huh? Penalty here, Tackler not rolling. Same as the other end. It was the same as the other end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we thought it was okay. Yeah. 
Well, you just update that crowd figure too. Informed that there are 36,000 in, which that's great. Scrum called. That's a great call here, TJ, as well. They could have gone for the points, could have gone for the corner. Now they're going to scrum. Well, obviously, as we've seen, Tokalahi just got a small problem with his leg, so maybe Patrick Tuipilotu was aware off the back of that last scrum penalty that this could be very much the option. They did well there, the Highlanders, with Parkinson coming through to shut down that line-out drive. But this is a different situation that they've got to confront here now, the Highlanders. They need to really make sure that everybody's on the scrum because this Auckland scrum is incredibly powerful. Emboldened by the outcome of the last scrum. They go to another. This time it's their ball. Heem right behind the pack. But you get a funny feeling this might be full steam ahead for the Blues 8. Front rows go down. He's playing advantage. So they can have another rip through the backs. Black will put the kick out to the wing and Talia scampering across as Ioani steps in and goes in for the try. Well, it was a very interesting situation that the Highlanders presented the Blues because they put both Mitch Hunt and another defender on the right-hand side of the scrum, so it left them really vulnerable to that left. They were a little bit too worried about that right-hand side, I think, and because of that, when the opportunity arose, you can see how narrow and thin they are. Look how far in Josh Uane was. He worked really hard to get back out there, but with that sort of momentum, his footwork to Lear, they are always in trouble, the blue strike. Yeah, when defence jams like him, this is the only option to get on the outside of the rail, but to execute and Mark to Lear. Well, this guy at the moment is absolute money. Well, finishing off the hard work. Remember, they were playing under advantage, so their forwards really just starting to take control at scrum time. And they reap the reward out wide. Mark Tillia the try. And Oteri Black. Who's goal kicking right through the season has been very good. Uh, no signs of trouble with that knee injury as he slots the conversion and the Blues lead by seven to three. Let's just have a quick look at what Oteri Black sees when he receives the ball. As we pause it just now, he can see the space. Now it's about the execution. As we roll it on, he gets it bang on. Perfect kick. Well done, Blues. He showed some real composure. For the restart. And it's Tui Pelotu. Outside, outside. Therefore, he's saying he took it over the 22, so they can't put it out on the full. Christie will bang it high. Talia to get after it. Not a lot of depth on the kick and a loose one. Hoskins to Tutu getting after it, and he's managed to wrap up Ioane as well. Blues have got numbers there, and Christie's come through, and he's stolen it for the Blues. So good pressure from the kick. Well, Sullivan trying to kick it deep, finds a bit of space, oh, gets a wicked bounce as well. Rolls it into touch. Well, that's the way he hit it. He just hit the inside of the ball, and it was the way that the trajectory of what he does, you can see there he hits the inside of the ball, gets that perfect banana-style kick. Excellent territory from Zahn Sullivan. Two years old when the Blues last won a title. Pressure on the Highlanders line out now. So Tutu goes up, but Parkinson, such a good exponent at line out time. And that's a good clearing kick, too. Taking play just over halfway. Great clearing kick.
What a career. Just become such a complete player, Aaron Smith. Tui Polotu, this time, no competition at line-out time. Ioane in for the injured Tom Robinson. Laulala gets rid of it. Little pop ball from Christie away to Tui Polotu, and he hit it at pace too. Just needs someone to clear it now. Carly Tuioti with the carry, something he does very effectively. Satutu up quickly on him. The group there to help out Collins. Hodgman. Ash Dixon's already done a lot of tackling in this game. And looks like Christie getting ready to go to the air again. They've reclaimed a couple already. Now this one is going to come down around the 10. Just a couple of the chasing Blues players overran it a bit. Oh, Heem's got in there and he's ripped the ball. He looked like he'd ripped the ball away. But the Highlanders have it. Hugh Renton. Back they go under a bit of pressure, Hunt, but nicely eluding Akira Iwani and then banging a high one. Sullivan takes it calmly and then steps away from Hunt and boots it away back down towards the 22. What sort of a bounce is he going to get this time? Chases his own kick and the Blues arrive in force too. Threatening to walk over it, but Bryn Evans is back there. Oh, doing a trooper's job there, Bryn Evans, because they were under all sorts. And here come the Blues counter-rucking again. Tokolahi caught inside the 22. Still, despite all the pressure, calmest person out there, Aaron Smith. Nadek, he's slipping as he gets the kick away. Heem fires it across field. Got the call from Black. Here's Talia, who's looking sharp. Moves it on. Yuani accelerating. But Gregory did just enough. Got him round the ankles. Christie arrives. And now they go back to the big boppers. Carly Toyoki to the short side. Now they go. Fayane is there. Collins barreled out of that as he tried to contest at ruck time. Eklund. Leave it. No, you're not strong on the ball. Christie. Now the double pump from Black. Moved on by Iwani, and now accelerating is Bryce Heem. Throws a speculator in field, and the Blues manage to hang on to it. Now hitting it flat on the advantage line. Hodgman, Tui Polotu, and now Fayani. Play it down and out of play. And it looks like it might be all Teddy Black. So the Blues will have to carry on without him. No, he's stuck there. Ball's available. Yeah, still receiving some attention. As Hoskins Satutu takes it on. So the forwards will have to do a job here. Bit of action off the ball. And the referee, I think he's seen that. Oh no, it's at the breakdown. Jimeno. So Ioane moves on, he's back in the play. Or Teddy Black, he was down for a bit. Now Ioane having a little work around the fringe. Taken on by Papali'i, Blues building. Satutu. And they'll come back for the penalty. Yep. Oh, 15 phases, much better. You want to come up to formally review that? And real physical as well from the Blues. Five Punching off. hard. Okay. We're going to TMO. Brendan will come to you. We just want to, um, on your uh, check, check, just to have a look at that tackle on Team Blue, was it? Yes, that's right, Mike. Team well, it was the tackle, tackle that lowered Orteri Black that they're going to yep. look at here. Well, he took it to the line, TJ. I think it might be Ash Dixon that got him. So the timing was okay. Ooh. Oh, boy. Oh, that looks like trouble. It has one saving grace, Ash Dixon, from a catastrophic card is the fact that he is looking to wrap his arm. But the contact is with the shoulder and to the jaw. I don't think there's any 
He's wrapped mitigation in terms of Teddy Black dropping into the tackle. It's just a bad timing yeah, issue for Nash Dixon. But he is looking to wrap. So I'll go, I'll go well for that. Yeah, because he's always high and he has made some contact with the head. Shoulder. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So we're at yellow card because there is some head contact. It's not direct, not severe danger, but secondary contact. Yep. Okay. Uh, yellow it is. Yeah. Okay, BP, we've got a decision there, mate. You can come back. Okay, so what we've got is we've got um, two white. He's always high. There is some head contact, but it's secondary off the shoulder and then risen up. So we're at yellow card against two white. Have you got any other facts there to that? No, nothing, Mike. Okay. Okay. It's going to be yellow card because yeah, it, okay. it is some high contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know, there's no malice on Yeah, there, I know. It's, it's still head contact. Yeah, and, and we'd all accept that. He looked like he was properly set. He just drove up a little, didn't he? Yeah, Look, and, you know, there, there'll be many out there that think maybe it warrants harsher punishment because you roll the dice in that area you want to go here for and you enter into that danger yeah, zone of red card. I think probably, like I said, okay. what did save Ash Dixon was is he just got his timing time's off, but he on. was always intentionally looking to wrap. He didn't drop that arm and look to lead with the shoulder. And now all Teddy Black's gone for an HIA, so it's going to be Harry Plummer who's going to step up and take this shot in Jersey 22 for the Blues. Time's going on. Well, there was certainly some urgency shown. Well, they're going to take a shot at goal. It's interesting because a scrum might have compounded an already existing problem for the Highlanders because they would have had to have taken a player off to bring a hooker on. But they've opted... To go for points. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're um, still working on that. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of low tackles are getting caught in there, but you're still getting quick ball. But we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. No plumber. No on at 24 minutes. Could be a big night for him. First touch of the game is to kick the ball between the post. A penalty to give the Blues a 10 to 3 lead. Well, they look to slow the tempo and rhythm of the game now and try and play in the right areas, the Highlanders, until they can get Ash Dixon back on the field. And I thought they actually did really scramble well in that period where the Blues managed to phase 15 times, made some mini line breaks, had some players dangerously entering the game, but they managed to hold on and only concede three. They won't want too many more while Ash Dixon's off the field. So they lose one of their leaders for what will be just over eight and a half minutes now. Kick goes deep, and Sullivan, who's got a terrific left boot, bangs it away back down. They take it quickly, the Highlanders. Hunt, chipping a little kick over the top, really, and Christie is there. Again, the two Tasman mark or clash. Akira Ioane says, I got this. Satutu goes hard, but Brent Evans equal to the task on defence. Plummer, moving it wide, Sullivan and Fayani, and he moves it on, Papa Lee in space, frees up Bryson, good tackle mate, but he's kept it alive, Papa Lee stayed in support, and the Blues are inside the 22, Fayani to clear it away, waiting for it is Eklund, he's got Lala with him, as he barrels into the defence. Hodgman now. This is what they like to do. Use the big forwards to create momentum for their lethal back line. Carly Tuiotti again. Always makes a couple of metres. Akira Iwane. That's 10 metres away from the line now. Plummer. Rico Iwane goes to ground. Harmon tried to get hands on all. It's been kicked forward by Hoskins Satudu. And that's a bit of fortune there for the Highlanders. They'll get a chance to relieve the pressure. They'll go back to Nareki. And he'll find touch with his left foot. Well, again, they scrambled really, really well. The breakout down the right-hand side with Bryce Heen. The interchanging of passing, Papali'i and Co. was outstanding. They managed to get back and... Draw a few deep breaths of Highlanders and hang in the fight, but the Blues are piling on the pressure at the moment. Jack Eklund. Oh, that's 
Oh, straight. That's not what they wanted. Oh, that's that line you were talking about just a little bit earlier on, isn't it, Marshy? Yeah. Well, while the scrum's setting, let's go down to the sideline. Blues assistant. Fa'alongu Tana Umanga Talofa Tana, you've got to, I guess, make the most of this period with Ash Dixon in the bin. Yeah, Lungi Mama, uh, TJ. Yeah, you're right. You know, we got them down to one down and we've just made a few errors, so we're giving them opportunities to slow the game down and um, really you know, uh, wind down the clock. So we've just got to hang on to the ball. We've made a few errors down here. Uh, we've got to be a bit more clinical. Malo Tana, uh, just want to know what you're thinking about what you're doing with the ball in contact at times, just maybe not staying composed in that area because you are making good breaks. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're just saying that uh, we, if we can get into shape, get our players in the right places and, and get them in, uh, uh, in our shape, that we can uh, make things happen. But we're just getting uh, uh, isolated and uh, going individually sometimes. So I think it's just the way the game's going. Uh, once we get uh, a bit more uh, composure in there, hopefully we can slow that down. Well, it's a long kick. And they're going to run it out. And it's not a bad gain in the end. You think about where they were a moment ago. The Highlanders will be happy with this. Line out about 30 metres from the line. And the problem is they're missing their hooker, so somebody's going to front up and throw the line out ball in. There was a day when any opportunity like that, a scrum half would step up and do it because I feel they can do anything. Oh, they've actually got Coltman on. So, obviously made that replacement. And... Uh, Tompkinson. Yeah, Tompkinson. Tompkinson. There you go. Good work. Well, they've taken a back off. As New Zealand teams are increasingly likely to do these Stop. days. Blue, Lose a forward. Blue. Open up. Open. To the bin or sending off. White, come in. And you take White, off a back when you bring a replacement out. So Coltman. Important. He finds the mark now. Blues getting up to challenge and they don't take it cleanly, the Highlanders, and coming away with it is Kurt Eklund. Well, they put the pressure on Coleman. And they get an outcome, the Blues. Christie again, the high kick is the tactic. Racing forward, Nareki, but oh, another great chase from Bryce Heen. What a campaign he is having. Christie now takes it to the short side. Where well, Kiri Iwani is there to muscle it up a few metres and then go to ground. Kali Tuioki moves it on to Plummer. Tui Palotu, but met with real force to group and Renton on the tackle. Christie sees Eklund away, but says, no, I'm putting it up again. Heen goes after it. Well, oh, real oh, tangle that's on I think he was pushed. The referee will want to have a look at this. Justin, have a look and we'll just have a look and see how this unfolded. Yeah. So we're going to review the player coming in yeah. and the contact in the air as well. And potential obstruction too. Yeah, the player coming in and the contact. Yeah. At the okay. moment it's just a knock on, but we'll review if they're still Knock on by Hollanders. Yeah. yeah. Okay, boys, just give us some space here. Brendan, we're going to come to you. We just want to have a look at this. At this stage, we've got a knock on by Hollanders. I just want to check to see if there's any clear obstruction here and then the contact by the uh, Hollanders man in the air. Yes, bring Mike, we'll bring that up on the screen for you. It's definitely not going to look pretty for Bryce Heem, but if he was pushed, then obviously he had no way to avoid it. Well, they'll have a look at Nareki first. Has he changed his line? Has he changed his line? No, he hasn't changed his line, and that's really bad. I, I, it looked untidy, right, as I mentioned, live, and it looks even worse on replay. Nareki's done nothing wrong. He did nothing different than what Finlay Christie did earlier to Mitch Hunt, and Mitch Hunt pushed them out of the way and got penalised. He's, an, he's allowed to go back on that too, line. Um, I think if anything, by uh, he's probably changed his line here. And to Nariki, locked legs, and then... Look at that, it's just accidental, though, because yeah. I think they've, they've bumped into each other, which has forced Bryce Heem to fall over. Well, it's just two bodies colliding. Both of them ended up on the ground, and so did it Mitch Hunt. I'm really thinking common sense needs to prevail here. No intent from Nardik. He didn't change his line. Bryce Heem just bumped into him. 
Yeah, it's just, clear it's just super clumsy so and unintentional. That's careless. We're going yellow card for the landing. Oh, yeah. yellow. Mike. Sorry, Brendan. Just want you to consider the impact of the Highlanders' winger on the player. Okay, so we're potentially mitigating down, you reckon? Yes, I believe so. Okay. I think this is what they're talking about. Well, you just said Justin common sense here. Yeah. Well, the, the, in a way, you could argue they're both shoulder to shoulder, so. initiating some contact, aren't they? So I don't. I think it's careless by the winger there. He's, he's, he needs to be more careful with it. Well, oh, he's going to overall here, Mike. The thing with it's dangerous landing, so there is some contact, so we're going to get into yellow. Well, what they've also got to consider is Bryce Heem had eyes yeah. only for the ball. And it was only because he was looking up at the ball, he didn't see Nardeki, who, who, who he collided with, which forced him to fall into Mitch Hunt's. We're going yellow card. The only other thing I'd say, too, is if he'd landed on his yeah. backside, they, no one would be saying anything. But they're, they're, again, it's all about impact. the outcome. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So there is some impact there from the Highlanders' winger. That's caused some of the impact. He's tripped and then fallen into him. So we have got a penalty against the Blues' winger. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll explain it. Come on in. Okay, so what we've got, we have got some, um, the Hollanders winger coming back has caused some contact on the, the Blues winger. However, he, it is a little bit careless. He has tripped because of that contact and fallen into your man. So it is going to be a penalty against your man. We're bringing it down from the yellow because there is that contact there, okay? So it's going to be a penalty against your winger just over here, okay? Hallelujah, we've got some common sense in our game. Okay. Oh, cracked well, well done, in. guys. They cracked it. Woohoo! I thought for a moment he was going to overrule there. I thought he was going to have the casting, the chairman's casting yeah. vote, but yeah. Brendan Pickerel, yes, I was just going to say, absolutely, absolutely yeah. TJ, Brendan Pickerel coming in and, and as TMO and saying you need to consider the effect that the collision had on the way that he really couldn't avoid what happened to him. That's brilliant because they eventually work it out and they think the game doesn't suffer because of a poor decision. It's a good outcome too for the Highlanders. They get a penalty. They can run a few more minutes off the clock, but now they go to another line out. No company for Ash Dixon. And Oteri Black, we're hearing, has passed his HIA. Down towards the back, and Evans under a bit of pressure from Kali Tuioti, but he brings it down. Use it one! Veteran presence that he's bought, Brent Evans. Now they're driving it ahead down towards the 10. Smith urging them on. Progress halted for a moment and then they go again. Don't come round, Blue. Don't come round. Oh, this is great work. This is sucking up the seconds and now they get the penalty. Call from the sideline saying no penalty. Benno keep that time overruling. Ball scooped up by Mitch Hunt. Passes it on to Billy Harmon. There's another advantage coming here, but the Highlanders might be able to make something out of this. Here's Hunt. Looking for someone to pass to. Nothing really on. So he goes into, tech, uh, into contact inside the 22. Ford's queuing up away to the right. Six blue, tackle a man off the ball. Marquita Ioane has been penalised. Oh, that's just really good, sensible rugby from the Highlanders. Managed to get the execution right yeah. this time with Coltman and also the jumper. And then his yeah, composure shot. at the back Aaron, of that mall as being that pivotal ball carrier. When the mall started to disintegrate, they stayed composed and they set up their launch off the okay. collapsed mall which forced the error from Akira Ioane, steps in on Gregory, takes a man without the ball. And not only will they milk the clock, they will quite possibly get three points out of their composure as well. Well, he's down at the moment, Brent Evans, but you spoke about him, TJ, just so aware at their lineup. There they are, or Teddy Black, yep. just about to come on as you spoke about, TJ. Yeah, all smiles, and you can bet your boots that Ash Dixon has said, bro, there was no intent in that. Sorry. But now the attention back on Mitch Hunt. Plays his cards right. He'll stretch this out, and when this kick 
goes between the posts. They'll be back to 15. It's 10-6 at Eden Park in the Super Rugby Trans-Tasman final. Both back to full complement, KT. Yeah. Fourth header, and there's a close skip for the Highlanders. Ash sticks it back off. Evans back in the action. He was the man chasing, but Evans, Use such an expert in the air, pulls it down. And Aaron Smith, ready to kick. A lot of box kicks in this game. They've been well contested. And that one not well taken by Oteri Black. And Smith's got it back, fires a long pass away to Hunt. Spots a lot of space in behind Telia. And finds the touchline with a raking kick. It's just... Such a great tactic here, TJ. Both teams what? exploiting it well, and what? then Aaron Smith following up his own kick. And this is a nice raking one across the park. Well done, Mitch Hunt. Are you in or out? Five. Finlay, back. Now the Blues look like they're going to try and drive this one away. Papa Lee in the halfback role. Four and a half minutes to play. It's a tight one at Eden Park. That Tui Polotu brings it into the mall. And they drive it away now. Satutu comes in. Working it up towards the 22 for a clear and kick. Christy, plenty of time to have a look around. Little nod. And then banging it away into touch. We're all very well aware of Finley Christie and how energetic he is around the field. Good running game, crisp pass, but I think a big part of his game that's probably unrecognised is how good a kicker he is. He's very accurate, and it's why they use him a lot. And it's changed the way that they not only exit, but they can compete for the ball in the game. He's easily the best kicking scrum half they've got within their squad. And must be a contender, surely, for the All Black squad to be named on Monday. Oh, they'll be looking at him. He's playing well. Parkinson. They take it into the mall. Funneling it back. Coming through the middle is Satutu. And he's managed to wrestle it away from them. So great work from Hoskins Satutu. Christie clears it away. Black delaying the pass brilliantly for Fayani. Looking for the pass out wide. Bryce Heem is there. Offload not taken cleanly though by Sullivan. It's into touch. Oh, again, the Blues off counter attack so dangerous. It's what we talked to Tana Umanga about before, though, at those really crucial times. They're just guilty of throwing the ball away here. So Tutu, big and strong, manages to free the ball. Nice injection for, from Fayani. Collins was the one who had to come up and try and cut the outside off. Fayani recognised that. The wide pass was a good one to him. He just needs to hold that one. Geez, that's good scramble though. You look at the numbers and wide jerseys around Bryce Heem when they come across. Nariki goes low. Mitch Hunt's there. They have four or five yes, backing them up as well. It's been good from the Highlanders tonight. Well, we love to talk about attacking talent in New Zealand, but and these two teams have had to score a lot of points to get here, but it's their defence as well that's been so good. And we saw it there again. They were breached. But they scrambled so well, and now they get a chance to clear. Blues will look to put the heat on again, but a good quick hook. And Hunt under a bit of pressure, but again able to bang a good punt off into it's just, touch. It's just so good from Aaron Smith, because at that time he didn't panic. He waited, he waited, he waited until he felt that Ash Dixon was ready to strike. That front row pressure is pretty intense at the moment coming from the Blues, so they got the time and quick hook and got the exit. 
Went to the front, did the blues, and taking it forward was Eklund. So they go back into Highlanders territory, looking for some points before the break. Just to stretch the lead out a little at half time. Tui Poloku, will they really have met the challenge of him steaming through? And the referee playing advantage. There was a little knock on at the ruck by the Highlanders. It'll quickly disappear. Oh, Eklund. Now Christie having a wee look and stabbing it through. Black rolling towards the touchline. And the advantage is over. Christie having to go in and contest for it. And again, the Blues arriving in numbers and they've walked over the top of it. Hodgman has it. So they get possession back. And one last chance for some points in the first half. Eklund. Great strength from Parkinson to hold him up, but Christie's there. Rifles the pass away to Black. Now, Ioane, lovely ball away to his brother. Back to Satutu. That's just five metres from the line here, the Blues. Here's their chance for some more points before the break. Nipple Lalala crashing onto it. Oh, referee's playing advantage. De Groot, I think it is. Black calling for it. Another kick out towards the wing. He's there, but he won't reach it. They'll come back for the penalty. Well, I thought there was a forward pass in that movement. I really did. Not supporting your body weight. I don't, I don't know and don't think that they can go back under under the current laws. He's a never initially strong to start. The group with was, Aaron, I don't feel, supporting his body weight. He got Stop down and over the ball and he actually got his hands on it, but he wasn't stable. Again, it's another line break, break from the Blues. This was excellent work from Christie. Got himself in the right position. That then enabled the rest of the counter ruckers to get over top of him. Here's the short pass from Rico, and that's way forward. Way, way forward and uh, unfortunately not picked up. Mike Fraser was right there. No one got it, which sometimes happens. And they managed to again scramble well, though the Highlanders, Leo McDonald, not happy with the execution. It was just blink of an eye stuff. Maybe a captain's challenge might have seen to that. But we don't have that in Super Rugby Trans Tasman. Well, we complimented them before. They've got to get those things right, though, in big finals. Well, it's ended up. And another three points for the Blues, so they have the lead at the break in the Sky Super Rugby Trans-Tasman Final for 2021. It's the Blues 13, the Highlanders 6. Both teams intact. But you heard it from Dan Hullanahu, the Blues not far off from making some changes in the second half. Was coming. The Blues will play towards the west in the second half. Highland is looking to add a title to the one they collected back in 2015. Blues looking to end that much talked about barren stretch. Tackle! Putty Putty Parkinson wrapped up. Uh, he's been impressive again through the first 40. Aaron Smith going high. So many have gone to the air in this game. And uh, a few have been dropped as well, but no harm done there. Hoskins Satudu losing that one. But the Blues have got it back. And once again, the left boot of Zahn Sullivan coming into play. Mitch Hunt read it well, though. And he's going to have a go. Well, he's been caught just outside the 22. That's dangerous because a couple of times the Blues have driven them off the ball in their own territory. They've got it this time, though. And Ash Dixon sets it. Back from 10 minutes in the bin. Interesting comments, too, that we heard from Shane Christie. And after I'm feeling that maybe Bryce Heem should have gone as well. Just feels very much in the balance, though, doesn't it? Been a lot of talk about what the teams had to do to get to the final, but it still feels like a final. Christie and Nepal is there again. It's Putty Putty Parkinson. Just such a physical presence. And here's another one. 
Christie goes back to Black again. That little double pump and a lovely offload away to Hoskins Satutu. He's done that a couple of times to open them up. Black now Hodgman, the tackle of Billy Harmon. Christie again, flat ball for Patrick Tuipulotu out in front of the post, the Blues. Christie looking away to his right where the forces are gathered. Talia driven back, good defence, Jimeno leading the line. Again, they start this process of just trying to wear them down with these big forwards and then injecting Rico Ioane. Picked up by his brother Akira. He's muscling his way towards the line. He's close. Might even be over, but he can't get it down. Yeah, it's held up. It should be a line dropout. It's held up. It's on the line. It's over the line. Goal line dropout. Wow. It's held up over the line. It's causing them problems, the short five-man line-out, oh, the Highlanders, because up. twice they've thrown it right to the front, caught the Highlanders unaware. And when they get momentum onto the ball and you get ball runners like Akira Ioane, oh, Sotutu, Tuipulotu, they are getting over the advantage line. Good Top assists line. on them as well, which is punching them through the tackle. The Highlanders, again, are forced to scramble early in the second half to hold on just in defence. Yes, those little tip-ons too, Martian, is causing alarm bells and just getting those bruised runners just halfway through those holes. So Hunt. Drop kick down towards the 10, out close to the touchline. Satutu winding up for a charge, trying to get on the outside and got through the first tackle. Siati Tokolahi banging his hand on the ground in disappointment. And, oh, that's Parkinson's come through and the referee's playing advantage. Well, they haven't done too many things that you've count an error but that's one of them and now here's Rico Ioane looking to make them pay getting on the outside Christie intercept but they'll have to come back for the penalty Nariki was away well, he showed incredible power they initially did putty putty Parkinson to hold up Sotutu basically manhandle him to the ground and stood like a giant over top of the over top of Sotutu, but he was standing in an offside position. And then when Christie grabbed the ball, he simply couldn't resist and slapped the halfback's hand down right in front of the referee, which has resulted in this penalty. You're yeah, just showing a bit of frustration. You're still going on about it there, Putty Putty Parkinson. You can see why he's manhandling him. This is the free play here, but a smart, smart move here. They looked over to the sideline. TJ Fayani looked at Tana Umang and Tana Puna straight to the post. Well, I don't know whether he's disappointed with the decision or his own actions. I think it'd have to be the latter, wouldn't it? He's been caught bang to rights there, not coming from the hindmost. And so it's very handy here for Orteddy Black to open the second half scoring. Oh, he's missed it. That's a rare miss too. And Paddy Paddy Parkinson will be feeling a, a whole lot healthier right now. He would have been feeling a little bit sick about giving away a needless penalty in big finals. Or Teddy Black could not convert again. They stay in at the Highlands. They are hanging on big time. Oh, the pressure of the final of the decider. Or Teddy Black has been banging them over from everywhere. Very high dropout. And a good, yeah, off white, challengeable off. kick to Nareki it was who got up after it. And they swing it wide. Here's the man who sent the kick skyward. Hunt, and now a change of angle. A good one, too, from Michael Collins. Dragged to the ground, but he's got play down to halfway. Hunt now, charging onto it, was Josh Ioane. Flicked it up for Parkinson. Roll. He's swallowed up by Dalton Papali'i. Smith brings it away, Stop. Hunt with the kick, yep. and he's got too much on that, is he? Oh no, that's a ripper! That's inside. He wasn't confident, Mitch Hunt, when he kicked it. He looked at it and thought, uh-oh, and he dropped back a little bit, and he basically willed it to stay in the field of play, which it doesn't. Oh yeah, the it clips yeah. the line by the look of that. Yeah, we're coming back here, Les, I just seen it on the big screen. We're talking about relieved Just players. I think Zahn Sullivan careful. might be a bit relieved here as well. Could he even try to add on about 15 metres? 
Just Here's this five-man line out again for the Blues. Let's see if they react a bit better okay, than Highlanders to the threat at the front than Hodgman. Mitch, Mitch, come back. Yeah, the Highlanders were lining up on the 10. Eklund wanted to throw it on the 22. Tap down on the blue side, a little bit untidy. Christie, oh, it does cleverly. Eventually taken in the tackle by Jimeno. It was untidy ball, but they've got it. Now a chance to again start building some momentum. Gregory, Stop, blue, little false blue. start there, almost got up out of the blocks too quickly. The kick high goes wide, and Heem has gobbled it up, then he's thrown it away. And they've given it away to Tomkinson. And his kick skies back in field, bringing it forward, or Teddy Black eluding the first tackler. Now picked up by Akira Iwani, carried forward with some purpose. Eklund now moving it on. Blues on the 10, Hodgman's calling for it, he's got it, left it behind, Telia is there. It's been knocked through by the Highlanders, Telia launches himself. De Groot making the tackle, Christie in quickly, throws a nice flat ball again for Carly Tuioti. Again for Christie, takes a couple of steps, nice hands from Akira Ioane. They wrap him up just short of the 22. Eklund, bruising ball carrier. And the referee said advantage over. Christie goes back the other way. Akira Ioane floating one over the top. He moves it all the way forward. Papali'i was sprinting in. But they got away with one before half time, not that time. Just at the moment when they start to multi-phase and look yeah. threatening, getting over the advantage line. It's just that last execution pass uh, that's not quite sticking. Uh, Forward one, passes, one. passes going to the opposition player, spilt in contact. Those yeah. small little things at the moment are just not enabling them to capitalise on the good work they're doing. Yeah, just that last pass as you spoke about there, Marshy, and they know as well, Ex execution once again. Pulling them down, and the Highlanders, well, they've gone to the bench. And Aiden Johnson's coming on in Jersey 17, replacing Ethan De Groot, who's down for a long time. Also, Putty Putty Parkinson looks like he's battling at the moment. Yeah, the suggestion was okay. that the Blues yeah. might go to their bench early, but they haven't. The Highlanders have. De Groot comes off. Aiden Johnston on, as Carl has just told you. But it's uh, Putty Putty Parkinson who's uh, just causing some concern at the moment. This guy here has been super impressive, Justin. Yeah, he certainly has. Been a real fine for the Highlanders. Yeah, and then we also see Lynn Cotman coming back onto the field, replacing the co skipper Ash Dixon and the All Black. Here he is, Carl Tanuku Affet coming on in Jersey 17. Yeah, night's over for Parkinson as well. So suddenly, a flurry of activity on the benches. A gruelling final it has been. Not a high-scoring one, but a high-impact one. Yeah, it's going to be Josh Dixon in Jersey 19, replacing Putty Putty Parkinson, PJ. Well, there'll be no easing of the pressure at scrum time with Carl Tui Nukuafe out there, but Aidan Johnston... In Jersey 17 for the Highlanders. Balance has been really good, so keep those standards. I've just been told Putty Putty Parkinson's just Wait coming for off for an in. HIA, so he may right be back. Let's go. Time on. Well, the Blues have had an edge at scrum time. Crouch. Showed it to telling effect. On one occasion in the first half, Five. with the arrival of Carl Tui Nukuafi, spark another one. And starts to go back, but Smith so adept at getting the ball away. High kick, not a lot of depth on it. Who's going to get underneath it? Well, no one initially. And knocked on by the Blues, not taken cleanly by Aaron Smith. Scrambled in the middle of the ground, and it's Coltman who brings it under control. Aaron Smith now. 
And here the roar as the wave goes round the crowd. Narek, he tried to spark something with the kick ahead. So dangerous. He was there, though. And Sullivan, looking very calm, changes the angle. Saw some space away to the right. Oh, he's got a great boot on him, but it's kept in play by Mitch Hunt. Now he has to get rid of it as Talia comes at him. And in the end, it goes out just beyond the 22. Well, Nardeki, off counter attack, is always very dangerous. I tell you, Kurt Eklund did really well. He was the player that got back and got in the fight with Nardeki and managed to do enough that Sullivan could mop it up at the back. Here's Nardeki, who finds the space. Now, look at the work of the Blues hooker to get himself back with the headband on. If he's not there, Nardiki gets that bounce and then he's got one defender to beat with his dazzling footwork. But that's enough to save the day from Kurt Eklund. Well done. Now, Lala looks like his shift is done for the night, KT. Yeah, and then replacing jersey 18 by Marcel Renata. Be good tonight, Lil Lala. A uh, real buzz around the crowd. They really are enjoying this and it's great to see 36,000 in here for this final. Just give a nod to, to all of the Super Rugby franchises who've been generous with the ticket prices. Blues driving it ahead. Eklund has it and edging it towards the 22. Fayani looks like he's ready for a run. Christie brings it away. Fayani has to pull it down. Nice work though to change direction and break a couple of tackles. Blues go on to the attack now. Big carry from Tui Pelota, the offload to the new man, Renata. He stopped just a couple short. Tui Pelota again. Christie calling play to the right. That close. Ball squirts out, though. And lost forward by the Blues is the call. Did Aaron Smith have something to do with that? He was the player that rushed up really quickly and missed the tackle, which would have... Not pleased them at all on Fayane, which led to the momentum that the Blues got in. There's Aaron Smith, misses the tackle. Fayane gets well and over the advantage line. From there, man, they had some big, powerful carries. This man, Tui Pilotu, offload. They go close, Renata. And as I think it's Sotutu has a go at the line. Where's Aaron Smith? Keep your eye on number nine. Stay straight. We'll watch it. No, it's Billy Harmon. Billy Harmon. As Sotuta was looking to pounce over the line, manages to dislodge the ball. But again, the scramble from this Highlanders D has been absolutely brilliant tonight. It's really kept them in this final. A number of times this Blues team has broke. A number of times you think they're over, and a number of times the Highlanders have stopped them. Well, Aaron Smith will feed a scrum. It's right out in front of his own posts. Changes, of course, in the front row. Smith puts it in, the Blues put the heat on, penalty. Tight lead, straight across. No, no, don't go there. Angle. So once again, the Highlanders can get themselves out of trouble. So many players in this game, of course, in contention for higher honours. Announcement will be made on Monday of the squad for the early internationals. Not far away from a match against Tonga, a couple against Fiji to kick things off. Monday night at 7 o'clock on our breakdown show. A couple of changes coming on Three and six for the Highlanders. Subs. It's going to be Josh Honick, Juicy 18 replacing Tukulahi, and James Lenti is on a Juicy 20 replacing uh, Hugh Renton. He's been staunch tonight. He yeah, has, KT. This is a guy whose career was almost wrecked by injuries, and he's just shown such no, determination like, and character like to get yeah. back. And when so you well. lose a player like Shannon this Frizzell, way, that's a big blow to a team. But he has stepped up. What's our numbers, White? What's our numbers? Really struggling to get out of this zone in the second half, the Highlanders. They're absorbing a lot of pressure. They need to get a good exit and get some territory. Just wait, just hold him, Ben, hold him. Yeah, the Blues 
have really controlled territory and possession, but still have just that seven-point lead. That one goes over the back, and he's absolutely nailed there, Nareki. Dalton Papali'i with the most force, but they're still able to clear the ball away. And Jimeno, showing the determination that we've seen from him, carries it forward. Now Hunt putting the kick ahead. Telia goes up, takes it well. Boy, there's some bite in these tackles. The chases from both teams. The contest in the air. And, oh, penalty. A great moment, a great entry by James Lynches. Okay. Oh no, right, he's right, reversed it. Going the other way. There's no release first. Well, not for the first time tonight. First, he's been overruled. Get on the ball. Release first. Nine wide. Paul Williams this time. Allow twenty on the ball. Good work, mate. Wow, it's going to be interesting to make up the wash up of that call. Oh. That's massive in the context of this game. I'm well, just thinking about what Shane Christie said to you at halftime. Imagine what he's saying right now. Well, let's have a look at it. Talia goes to ground under the tackle. You can see there, there's Lynchus, and now he's, that's again, he's, he's not even the tackler. He's in over the ball, so Paul Williams did not need to interfere there. Just he should keep here, here. his flag just and right roll. There, and leave the refereeing to the guy out in the middle because he got it right and he's put him wrong. Well, there was absolutely a clear release if that's what he's supposed to have done wrong. No, that that's well, that could come back to haunt to Brad Evans try to come through the line out and haunt the Blues, and he's done pretty well too. Eklund has to take it to ground. No, no, no. This is just turning into a massive physical battle. A battle of iron wills between these two teams. Christie, away to Renata. They were waiting for him. Christie trying to dig it out. This time they get the penalty, and that's justice. Straight on the ball, back you go. Back you go, he's straight on the ball. Eight wide. Well, it is. I think probably the thing that will be concerning the Blues at the moment, even though they do have that advantage on the scoreboard is the amount of pressure that they're putting on the Highlanders. Nearly six minutes inside the Highlanders, 22. 67% possession, 70% territory. They just are not probably coming away with the points Leon McDonald would like from all that pressure because the Highlanders are one of those teams that just don't go away. They will not go away. And if you keep them in the game, they will hurt you at some stage. Yeah, it's probably some of that by the guy who got the turnover there, Kazuki Himeno. He will go all night long. Good turnover. And a great kick, too. Taking play down beyond the 10. That's Mitch Hunt who's put them in this position. Tui Palotu goes up. Had to wait for it, yeah. Three Not kick. straight, but your early lift first. Not straight, but the first issue, they're not straight. And what do they do? Ah, the early lift. Well, well, the scrum's the best option. I would tap this. Um, I don't think they're getting the yep. platform. Line out again for the infringement. Oh. They just go again. There you go. They can go to the line out again because it was yep, where the original ball. infringement Four was, blue. so they had choice. Four, is that you? Yes, that's uh, that's reasonably early. He was back on the ground by the time the ball went in. Yeah, just coming into this line out. The Blues have made a big change. There we go. The skipper. He's gone oh, for the night. Patrick Tui Polotu. He's been replaced in Jersey 19 by the Tanifa. Josh Goodhue. Well, that's a huge call to take the skip off. That one down the back of the line out, and Evans has taken it. And here's Seal Tomkinson. Haven't seen a lot of him in the game, but we know he's the sort of player that could just do something a little out of the ordinary. PJ Fayani making the tackle. He now captains the Blues. Aaron Smith. Well, he'll be pleased his team's still very much in the hunt. For all the pressure they've been under, comes away with it. Hunt, now they're offside, and Nareki can have a go at them. Dragged to the ground by Akira Ioane. But this will be a kickable penalty. Billy Harmon. They drive him back. And Aaron Smith, oh boy, that was a great pass. Just hit him on the chest. Nareki was almost through, but they come back for the penalty. Seven offside. Now, do they offside. do they go for the kickable penalty? Like I know it's a final and points are paramount, but 
might still have to find a try to get ahead in this game yeah, at some stage. You've got to get line out, don't you, Marshy? You have to. Uh, their line out is good, and you know how good their line out maul is. Yes, Ash Dixon is not on the field. No, Aaron, don't worry about that. Where they are dangerous from the maul, but Colbert's as good at the back. They are going to opt for the three and keep themselves get themselves closer. So big call from Aaron Smith. Yeah, you can almost see, you can see their mentality though. Let's just keep chipping away at this. And the more we frustrate the Blues, the more they're unable to build a lead. Offside. Maybe they'll do something the ruck, a bit the silly. Well, the thing yeah, is too, the TJ Dennis, there. just a five court yeah, lead, isn't it? They don't have to get the conversion, so you're right. Still a long, long way to go as we come into the last quarter. And the longer they can keep it close, the better for them. So almost at the three quarter point. <laughs> Remember the Blues now you got, missed a penalty good. early on in the half to stretch the lead. Now an opportunity for the Highlanders to close the gap up again to four points. Crowd baying as Mitch Hunt lines up an important attempt at goal and he drills it right down the middle it's 13 to 9 in the final well he can handle pressure this guy twenty to play and for all the territory, all the possession, all the opportunities the Blues have had, it's still anyone's. Nareki, away to Jimeno. Going with great determination into contact. Maybe a chance to work it wide here. Collins just grabbed by the jersey. Top his legs by off. Smith fires the pass away to Dixon. Islanders now, and yeah, Aaron Smith pleading for a penalty, getting it. Is that momentum swing that we were talking about? The Blues have been the one who burst out of the change and said applied all the pressure, but didn't turn that pressure into points. So the Highlanders have all of a sudden got this little shift in the game, starting to win the advantage line. I tell you what, it's some sort of tackle from Papaletti. He really only grabbed at a jersey and managed to hold on to Collins. Otherwise, there was a real dangerous line break coming. It's such a good change of direction from Collins to put him into space. Just check out the desperation. Papali, he launches himself with one hand, grabs a hold of Collins and has the strength in that forearm to still bring him to the ground. Well done, man. Talk about players in form, this guy is, he is right at the top of his game. Coltman, way down the back, but Evans has been outstanding at line-out time. One of their great strengths, the line-out, the variations. This time they just go for an old-fashioned drive. Lentis has it in the back, and now the pressure really starting to build on the home team. They've got this nicely under control, and they're just 10 metres from the line. Smith waiting for the moment to release them, but they're still going forward. Now they'll stop. Smith looks to the right. Hunter's there, just slipping, and he's driven back by Akira Ioane. Gets over the ball, but he didn't release. It's a penalty advantage to the Highlanders. Maybe now they go for the big one. Jimeno dragging defenders with him. Smith looks for Hunt, flings it wide. Tompkinson keeps the ball alive. Hunt ducks out of a tackle. Now it's with Coltman. Blues trying to get over the ball. But the Highlanders looking to seize the moment. Oh, more massive tackling. Lenata. Referee, I think, is playing another advantage here. Good cue, almost wearily leading over, looking for it, but here it comes again. Big, big change now in the momentum of this game. Yeah, no clear release. Six. 
No. No. I'm not quite sure what ha happened Come to Goodyear. On. He went reeling away. It seemed like he was no, okay because point. when Mike Fraser blew the whistle, he was still on his feet and he was all right, and then yeah. something happened to him. I don't know whether he maybe had his knee twisted or something. It was really bizarre. No, he caught one in the ribs, Marshy. Oh, that did last he? Breakdown. Yeah. Let's clean that right here. Not nice. Yeah, anybody who's been hit in the ribs knows what that feels like, and it doesn't feel very pleasant. I <laughs> can give you the tip. Big decisions here, lads, for the Highlanders. They have got them under penalty pressure. They've got them under the pump. And with time ticking away, they need, again, they need to find a way to get well ahead in this game, and this is that big moment. Well, the Blues, their leader, is on the sideline. Can only look now. Blues, as has been mentioned so often, looking for their first title since 2003. Highlanders, 2015 was their year, and Aaron Smith, well, he was running the show then too. This was... A big moment, Elliot Dixon. There was some talk about whether he'd grounded the ball, but the try was given, and Aaron Smith it was. Fittingly, Nasi Manu, what a big hand he had in that title. They finally, finally got their hands on that trophy in 2015. So I, I actually think, just having had a look at it, while that injury is being assessed, they're going to take the three, so... Going to find themselves now just a point behind should Mitch Hunt yeah, be able to bang this shot. over. And we are in for some drama <laughs> to finish this yeah, well, trans Tasman the, final. The skipper's back on to Marshy for the Blues, so unfortunate for yeah, good you. On the line of it though, I'm on. Okay, time's going on. All right. Just an update too on Putty Putty Parkinson. He's failed his HIA, so he's not coming back for the rest of the night. Come on. So Hunt, that's the point 15 metres in from touch. He's on the 22. Josh Goodhue departs. And this to make it a one-point game. I think quite possibly, KT, that probably the, the scrum of the Blues influenced the decision of Aaron Smith to take the points. If they could have launched from a scrum right under the post there with a good platform, might have been a different picture that was there for him, but I don't think their scrum's good enough tonight. I oh, 100% agree. You take the any day of the week, a midfield scrum right in front of the post, don't you? But as you said, decided to go for the three points and have success, one point behind. Might have been different if the Blues had nailed that penalty earlier on in the half. But they're just chipping and chipping away. Here's a chance to make it 13-12. Mitch Hunt. Falls over. Oh, he fell over. But no problem. Flags go up. And what a finish we're in for. But at the moment, the lead might be with the Blues, but all the momentum's with the Highlanders. Just keep an eye on the planting foot of Mitch Hunt. But he still managed to execute the follow-through, even though that was slipping. It's outstanding that he just backed the rhythm. This one right out of the European Football Championship <laughs> we're all enjoying at the moment. Oh, Nariki losing it in contact, but no harm done. Hunter's there, lost it behind him. Ioane in there trying to hold him up. But he manages to wriggle clear and get the ball to ground. 15 to play. What a 15 minutes we're in for. Smith, the master. Kicking down over halfway. Satuta is there. Now Blackwell, they came up. Oh, that's great work from Collins. Cut off the pass. And penalty. got the penalty. Coltman. Oh, Liam Coltman or Teddy Black. Unfortunately, there was great line speed pressure from the kick from Aaron Smith, which was deep. Pegged Sotutu against the touchline. He had to deliver it to the midfield, but it's the chase. 
and it goes all the way back to the old adage, the basics of the game. Your kick is only as good as your chase. The chase from the Highlanders outside backs was absolutely outstanding. So the minute Ortieri Black had slipped and went to ground, the likes of Coltman and that had done the hard work, were riding over the ball. Man, they can go ahead. Well, it just gives them no option, doesn't it, Marshy? Firstly, it's a nice box kick executed into that corner. They spread it across. You spoke about the speed coming up and cutting down those options. All gone. Look at that. In the middle, the Fords get it done. Well, there's Coltman, something he is so good at. Now, a change of kicker here. They brought up Josh Ioane. An opportunity now for the Highlanders to hit the lead. And again, like Mitch Hunt, he's got a, he's got a very disciplined goal-kicking technique, Josh Ioane. He keeps his head down and steers at the ground. A good two seconds after he makes contact. Big moment for the young man. Now another who went south. Huge moment in his career. He's got enough on it. He's got enough on it. He's got it over oh. and they're in front. Did I say some drama? Game on. The Landers are ahead. Cool as you like. Watch that head position. Look at that. I'm not looking until it does that. Yeah, he's got the one wood, hasn't he? Joshua has forced a number of changes from the Blues as well. On and Blake Gibson, 20. Jonathan Rudu, 21. Harry Plummer, 22. Well, now do all those doubts start to resurface in the minds of the Blues? This has been a determined, typically courageous, full of character comeback from the Use Islanders. It. They were dominated in the first half, but the Blues just didn't get enough points to show for it. That ball has skied in field, and Harry Plummer is there, but oh, good chase. Nareki went round the ankles. Blues have got it, though. Ruru swings it wide. Blake Gibson charging back in field. Ruru calling for a penalty, and he's got it. Carl Tu and Nukuafe. Well, what can the Blues do to respond? Can they do anything to respond? Snatched away by Ruru. Again, the pass floated wide and into touch. They come back for the penalty. Now, what do they do? This is not an easy kick if they want to go for goal. I think they've got to roll the dice, though. There's still plenty of time on the clock. They're not going to get a huge amount of distance out of this angle to get right down into that five. Plummer's well and truly got the range from here. Worst case scenario, he kicks it dead or into the 22. They will get the ball back from a 22 dropout. I think this is the right call. Yeah, 100%. They're all looking at the sideline. Marshy, I'm looking at Tana Umango, who was waiting for the call to come down from up top, and <laughs> Tana ran on straight on with the field with the tee. Just have a look and see how the Highlanders have firstly kept themselves in this game, but are now taking the lead. They've been quite happy to do it in multiples of three. That's belief. Look at those three in the space of seven minutes. That's a Blues team maybe losing their grip. He's been good with few opportunities in the Trans-Tasman competition. Career-wise, well, it'll be a lower number than that. But this is a huge moment. Another one. Can Harry Plummer put the Blues back in front? Oh, he's hit it well. He's hit it beautifully. It's over. Ah, <laughs> oh, that is some sort of pressure kick. Plummer to step up, and it never looked like missing. Again, just perfect technique, confidence. And the Blues are ahead again. Oh, he looks so relaxed as soon as he hit it, didn't he? Right through the whole action. <laughs> That's what it means. Oh, he's cold as ice as Plummer. Straight over the black dot. Now the kick goes deep. Sullivan is there. And uh, looking to peel off some distance. Not his longest kick. 
He's not happy with where the flag's going up. It's on the 10 metre mark. Well, 10 minutes to go. The Blues have a one point lead. Ignore the BP, not having any bait. There's no bonus points to be gained for the loser in this game. Coltman. Tapped down. Oh, beautifully done, though, by Evans. Really had to stretch for it. Billy Harmon in midfield floating the ball over. That's going to go into touches. Yes. Now, now a bit of pressure comes back on the Highlanders. Open up so I can see the gap first. Yeah, well, the first piece was executed nice, but unfortunately from there, it's just all a bit lateral. They had back runners, but no one's taken and engaging the defence, so it's leaving nothing on the outside. Good D, the Blues. They go to the front of the line out. Papa Lee wins it. And, oh, TJ Fayan is steaming onto it. Couldn't grab it. Now here's a chance from broken play. You want it. Coming back and fouled Tomkinson. Ioane, that's a Rico Ioane, try to rip it Come away back. from him. No, advantage. No, they'll go back. I'm just going straight across the field. Blocks well, forward, white scrum. Like the Highlanders in the line-out previous, the Blues went more direct. They didn't go lateral. They It's just a, an amazing stat, that one. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And, and that goes to show that their discipline and contact and in general, with the ball, hasn't been good to have that many handling errors in the Highland as well. How good have they been? Well, it just shows oh, how sorry. they've cherished possession. Time's going on. Yep, time's on. Look at those tackle stats. 139 tackles made to only 66 by the Blues, sorry, so they've had to work twice as hard, the Highlanders. Shows the grit they've got. Yeah, they made a change in Jersey 22. Sammy Gilbert's come on, replacing Patili Sior Tomkinson. He hasn't had much run of the ball tonight. Quickly. Okay. Yeah. Well, the Blues. That was the theme, one of the big themes of the week, wasn't it? How long it's been between drinks. There was plenty going around in the early days of Super Rugby. Carlos Spencer, Jonah Lomu, the Brook brothers. Fitzy, a lot of them. And they were dominant. They won it two years in a row. They beat the Brumbies. The great Michael Jones scoring. Lost it the next year to the Crusaders. But they got something back in 2003. Dougie Howlett scoring on the way to their third title. You played in that game, Justin Marshall. Yes, I certainly did. Tony? It was a night. It was unsuccessful for us as Crusaders, but... A really big night for the Blues and a deserved victors, victors on that evening. And it's the last time that they lifted the trophy, so... Crouch. They will be feeling the pressure this evening as the Highlanders are hanging in there and looking now to launch from this scrum. Uh, Aaron Smith looks like he's going to go the distance. Blues with the shove. But Smith comes away with it, throws a nice pass away. They get it on the inside to Ioannis. Smith there to mop up. Blues, I think, calling... For a knock on here. Yeah, lost board. Going forward as well and lost board. And Dalton Papali'i gives his teammates a big round of applause. Time ticking away now, seven to go. Yeah, I'm going to come with this side. Yeah. Oh, such a good move right, though right, from the Highlanders, TJ, because it was so Patrick, flat to Patrick, the defensive let's line. Go. It's hard for them to react, but again, we spoke about the Highlanders yeah, scramble, the scramble side. on deep by the Blues in desperate the right time either for the Highlanders to come square. up with their first handling error of the match. We were just complimenting them on their discipline there. with the ball and not making the 10 mistakes that the Blues had, but with eight minutes to go on the clock, that was one that really needed the stick that didn't. Well, oh, fatigue becomes such a factor yeah. too. It's been such a physically intense game. Well, it's still just blues. one try. Sorry. Sorry, TJ. I don't expect the Blues to, to kick immediately here. They might just phase first, bring the wingers up. Hold it, relax, relax. Oh, ben O'Keefe. Yeah. Yeah. Balance here, boys, come on. Just a bit good. of input. Let's keep it up. James Lynch is going across go to him. Liam Coltman. He's ready to carry things on. Kurt Eklund still out there. And hook up for the Blues. 
Krell. Remember the Blues, both Kauli Tuiotu is expected to go to Japan. TJ Fayani also expected to go. Can they give them the ultimate farewell present? And the scrum collapsed. He's playing advantage, Ruru, tops it away to Heen, turns it back on the inside, they get the penalty, that's important for the Blues. Yep. Angle and collapse, Lucy. Yeah, you should have just seen the reaction of TJ Fayani there. TJ just going up to Carl Tunu'ukuafe. He knows how massive yeah, that is in the context of this game, that scrum right there. Just there. You get to this point of the game, Marshy, you're happy to be in front, even if it's just by one, I guess. Yeah, and at this stage of the game, when you are in front, the areas you want to be playing are making the opposition, if they do manage to get the ball, come from as deep as possible. So winning scrum penalties like this, getting good kicks away, and pushing the opposition back, are the key to winning big finals. And now the line out. Highlanders peel a couple off. Jonathan. Just four in for the Blues. Gibson is there. That one's gone over the top. Slap back on the Highlanders' side. Not a good time for the line out to start going wrong. Not in the final. Not when you're hanging on to a one point lead against one of the most determined rugby teams in the business. Lynches wrapped up inside the 22 again. Blues trying to power it on at the breakdown. And doing so, they've turned it over. Satuto breaking his way through tackles. Taking just a couple short of the line. Is this the moment? Gibson! Gibson scores! Eden Park's gone crazy. Eden Park's gone crazy. The Blues players have gone absolutely berserk. They know how important this moment is. Has this finally put the determined height of the side to the sword? There will be time, however. Look at the defence, rust up. The counter ruck with players on their feet was outstanding. They managed to turn the ball over. So Tudu gets his hands on it. Explosive speed gets through a tackle, beats another, gets brought down just before the line. Really quickly there, Ruru. The shift onto Gibson. Oh, yep. it's Blues time at Eden Park. Well, you can take that all the way back to the scrum. It was a nice kick from Zahn Sullivan it wasn't the best execution on the lineup but Gerard Kelly Tuiotti his clean at that Eight final ruck gave the opportunity for the counter ruck to end it up in this well done yeah well spotted Carl because no depth well you heard there that was Rico Ioane no gaps don't give them anything well, this kick's huge. If this goes over, I think that's game over. Yep. At the moment, it's six points. Eight might just be a bridge too far, even for the Highlanders. Here's the kick from Plummer. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's over. Well, a couple of clutch kicks from Harry Plummer has sealed the fate of a very okay. determined, resilient height of the side, you would think. They finalised, turn, finally turned pressure into points, the Blues. Right now, just two minutes on the clock. Kick Play doesn't go backwards. the 10, but the Blues have played Play at it. They're quite backwards. happy, though, because they've got the ball, and now Use they can the close it out. And end this wretched 18-year drought. Oh, what a game it's been. The Blues are now just going to try and give it to their forwards to close it out. 90 seconds to go. Cowley Toyotti still hungry for work. Perhaps his last carry in a Blues jersey. Tui Palotu is waiting for it. And the skipper drives into the heart of this determined Highlanders defence. They might get a penalty here. They do. They do. But they've got to go quickly. They have any chance. Well, they're going to go to touch. I wonder what they can do to stop the clock here. 
nothing. And this is where they have to come up Back with it that up. Up, absolutely perfect Blue. set piece line break. Decoy runners, numbers, Luke Browns, whatever it may be, they have to score from the set piece. They can't phase to do it. Not enough time. Well, no one's got more tricks at line out time than the Highlanders. And here's Sam Gilbert running off the back of the line out. Advantage, no clear release. Referee's playing advantage. But they've got to score before time runs out. Well, they go for the drop kick. No clear release. Uh, it missed. You could see what he was trying to do. Back, well, he needs back, to do it back. now. He needs to get the ball and just drop kick it over before the, the siren goes. Might be too late. No, that's time now. Siren goes. They'll have to go to the line out. Will they? What does the referee say? Yeah. Time off. Subs being made. But the celebrations have started. Ray Neuia on for the last act of the game. Islanders now just looking to have the last say. What a massive part they've played in this final. Gripping contest. Blues trying to wrap up Brent Evans and drag him to ground. That's it. The long way ends. After 18 years, the Blues have a trophy to put in the cabinet. scenes here at Eden Park and isn't it fantastic to see a franchise be able to achieve something they haven't to in a long period of time and the emotion is just pouring out of them they had to work hard they had to guts it out they got behind but they found a way they found a way and they are the very deserved winners of the trans-Tasman rugby competition yeah!